Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the All Out Leadership Podcast. We're continuing in the life of David. And uh, today we're going to be talking about from hero to zero. It's not as much how we start the race in life, but what we're really remembered for is how we finish. And there's a lot of people who start well, but they don't finish well. And I'm encouraged by the fact that we may not start very well, but we can make up for a lot with a strong finish. And unfortunately, well, it could be good or bad, people don't really remember the first part of our life. What they really remember is the end. And history records that you can be phenomenal and great, but it's how you go out of office. It's how you end your approach to retirement that really history and people remember you by. What we see is this in the life of King Saul, and it's the reason that God is looking for a replacement for Saul. Saul actually had an incredible start. Uh, He was very humble when he started. In fact, he didn't even want to be king. In fact, when it was time for the coronation ceremony, he was hiding in the luggage because he didn't want to be king. And we see that there was a time where he was really used by God. He even prophesied that he he was really a powerful leader, powerful warrior who truly stood uh, head and shoulders above everybody else, and that's why he was picked. But something happened over time that caused him to end as a zero, even though at one point he was a hero. And this is important in the story of David because this man who started out great really became David's ultimate nemesis. Now, just to side nugget, this person that we're going to see who is this continual thorn in the flesh for David was also an instrument that God uses in in David's life to help perfect David. And we'll talk about that in a future podcast as well. So 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7. So we're going to begin to see a turn of events inside of the heart of Saul that really just accelerates his downfall. So after David had killed Goliath, we see the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands, David his ten thousands. Then Saul was very angry, and and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed to David tens of thousands, and they have ascribed to me only thousands. You can hear the little self-sympathy, self-pity party in there. And listen to this. And now what more can he have but the kingdom? What we see in the life of David is David never was seeking a throne, never seeking a kingdom. It sought him. And when you allow jealousy and bitterness inside of your heart, it defiles your view. In fact, Hebrews 12 tells us, let no root of bitterness grow up and defile any. Because when we get a defiled perspective, we can't see the good in anybody and anything when we allow bitterness and a jealous heart inside of us. It's interesting that if you go to the old cadet chapel at the West Point Cemetery, You'll see plaques all over uh, the wall inside of this uh, chapel to Revolutionary War heroes. And there's a plaque that is to a major general, but the name is erased. So it says major general, but where the name should forever be etched in history, the name has been erased. And what's interesting is this major general was early on in the Revolutionary War, a very important general and had great success. Uh, He fought at the Battle of Lexington and Concord. He made the first amphibious assault in American history. He was so brilliant in his planning of the Battle of Saratoga that one of his contemporaries said, and quote, the very genius of war, speaking of this man. But what happened over time is that there was favoritism in, in in the congressional leaders that as their sons were being promoted, they began to get promoted, and this major general had got looked over and left out, and promotions that he should have had were being given to other people, and a seed of jealousy 
was forming and taking root inside of this man's heart. And over time, it caused him to become so resentful that he sold the country out. And we know him today as Benedict Arnold, Major General Benedict Arnold, who had a great start, but a horrible finish. And now his name is the epitome of traitor. What happened? He got jealous because he eyed other people. This is exactly what happened to Saul. Now, I want to jump over into a New Testament here uh, for a moment and and see some people, how they navigate this kind of same scenario, and uh, some do pretty good and some maybe not quite as good as others. When we see Acts chapter 13, verse 2, uh, there's a group of leaders assembled together, and they're worshiping and ministering to God. And, and I think that's just an important side note. They weren't ministering for God. They were actually just taking time to minister to God. And if you're in ministry, your first ministry is to God, not for God. And I have to remind myself as a pastor, and I'm telling you all the time, I'm just doing ministry. And sometimes I just forget to minister to God in prayer and worship and just enjoying Him, enjoying His presence. And so just a little side nugget there. Uh, make sure you're ministering to God, not just for God. And we read in verse 12, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Notice the order here. God started with Barnabas, and then we see Saul. Now, we know Saul later, and we'll talk about this in a moment, later becomes the great Apostle Paul. But the leader of the team wasn't Paul. It was a man named Barnabas. We actually see Barnabas had sought Paul out. Barnabas had taken and actually mentored and helped disciple Paul. And we see that here the leader has Paul with him or Saul with him, and they get sent out on a great missionary adventure. But then we read uh, some great ministry starts taking place, and we come to this interesting verse, verse 13 of the same chapter. Now, when Paul and his company Loosed from Paphos, they came to Phrygia and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Interesting. It started with Barnabas was the leader. Here we go, 11 verses later. How is it Paul, he's now the leader? Something happened where the leadership role changed, and now it's Paul. Well, we first see that it's Saul mentioned, and now we see the first mention really here of Paul. Paul became the leader. Why was that? Well, we see this. Saul's name means requested one. Requested one. But right between here, verse 9 of Acts 13, it says Paul's name was changed. Saul's name was changed, requested one to Paul, and Paul literally means little. Here's what happened. When Paul was no longer the requested one, or Saul, the no longer requested one, hey, look at me. I'm the guy. If it's to be, it's up to me. I'm your huckleberry. And he now became little. It was interesting. God promoted him. One of the fastest paths to promotion is quit trying to be the requested one and just be little in your own eyes and have a spirit of humility. This is what Saul lost back in the Old Testament. King Saul lost, and he still wanted to be the requested one. He didn't want anyone else to become great. He couldn't let anybody else be promoted. So what we see is Barnabas is to be commended here because he actually lets God do his thing, and we see that he lets Paul become the leader of the company. He sees the gift inside of Paul, and he goes with the flow. Now, we do see something interesting, though. There's a man that can't handle it, and his name is John Mark. John Mark, after Paul becomes the leader, and Barnabas, his uncle, is no longer the leader, we see John Mark bail. Most likely, John Mark couldn't handle this change of leadership inside of his own heart, and we see him bail on the mission, and it's unfortunate. There's a lot of people who are threatened when leadership changes take place. They're threatened when somebody else's gift begins to exceed them. When they get promoted, they begin to increase. Really, it says a lot about your character when you handle not your success, but when you handle other people's success. Can you recognize what God is doing in other people's life? Can you celebrate that? And not only that, can you support that? Or are you threatened by it? Are you murmuring? Are you undermining them? Are you sowing seeds of discord? Well, yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm, did you know about them? And well, I don't think they're really qualified for that. Well, well, remember back then when, and it's that little spirit of discord that you undermine the new boss, the new leader, that new person that got the promotion you thought you should have had. 
That means you have small character. Now, God can fix it. Just ask His forgiveness and repent. But let God fix that inside of you. The greatness of somebody is really measured by how you handle the greatness and promotion of somebody else. And we see that Barnabas did a good job, but not so much John Mark. Now, what I do love is that if you're a John Mark, if you have messed up, if you have been Saul and you haven't managed well the success of other people, you have jealousy inside of your heart. God's not done with you. And what I love is we see this later at the end of uh, the missionary part of Paul's life, we see him actually say, hey, bring John Mark with you. He is useful for me. And what we see is this. There was a big disagreement between Barnabas and Paul because Barnabas later goes, hey, let's bring John Mark with us. And Paul goes, we're not going to bring him. He's not dependable. He bailed on us. And so there was a sharp disagreement, and they separate ways. But what we see is this. Barnabas continues to develop in John, cultivates his character. Peter, the apostle, develops John Mark's character. In fact, the Gospel of Mark was actually written by John Mark, the one who quit and bailed and couldn't handle this leadership change. And it's actually often called the gospel according to Peter, because it's Peter's account to John that uh, was actually recorded by Mark. So what we see is, yeah, he messed up. He didn't manage somebody else's promotion, didn't manage Paul becoming the guy, and he got promoted above my uncle now. But what's so faithful is God. He doesn't give up on us. And God brought John Mark back, and John did end great. So you may be in a point right now, you may be Saul, you may be a a John Mark, you may not be managing other people's success well. God's not done with you. Ask his forgiveness and continue to grow, and you too can still have a great ending like John Mark. Look forward to seeing you next week as we continue on the life of David. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all-out leader.